very much. You were very quick to get quiet. Um, I'm going to be um, starting the meeting at this time, so I'm thanking all of you for being here. I'm Trandy Phillips, and I'm president of the Board of Registered Nursing, and I'm calling our meeting for February 14th. Um, I'm calling it open, and I would like to begin with the order of business of calling it to order with the roll call and establishment of a quorum. I'll start on my right. Good morning, Imelda Sehabit gets appointed by the governor as a public member. Good morning, everyone. Pilar de la Cruz Reyes Simoleon, appointed by the governor in the role of nurse administrator. Good morning. Thank you for coming in the rain, even. Uh, Donna Gerber, I'm appointed by the Speaker of the Assembly, uh, Anthony Rendon. I'm a public member. Good morning, Ann Salisbury, DCA Legal Counsel. Good morning again. Thank you for being here in these hard conditions. And also, I want to let you know that I am a registered nurse and I was appointed by the governor as a direct care provider. Good morning. I'm Dr. Joe Morris. I'm the executive officer of the board. Good morning. I'm Elizabeth Woods. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. And uh, I've been appointed by the governor in the advanced practice role and family nurse practitioner. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Michael Jackson, appointed by the governor in the faculty role. Thank you for joining us this morning. Before we go on to our next order of business, I'd like to take a point of personal privilege. Uh, this board sadly lost one of our members recently, and she was taken from us too soon, and it was so sudden and sad. So we really want to honor her. So we want Barbara Yaroslavsky to be at, our, at this as her last board meeting. So at the end of the table is Barbara's chair and her plaque because as far in our hearts, Barbara's here and we'll say a farewell as this is her last meeting. So thank you all. And now I'd like to work up, move on to item 2.0, which is public comment for items not on the agenda. If anybody has any public comment, please do come forward. Thank you. Uh, seeing no public comment, we're going to go on to item three. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Are you going to make public comment? Yes. Don't rush, we're fine. You look like you just came out of the rain. Get your breath. <laughs> Well, this poor woman is getting her breath. I will make one other comment, and that's that if we have a problem with people in the back of the room being able to hear, please um, let us know. You know, make a sign or let the staff in the back know so that we can um, make sure that the microphones are adjusted properly. It's a copy. Uh, please introduce yourself and make your comment. Thank you. Hi, I am Diane Bristelli. I am the Associate Dean Director at Golden West College in Huntington Beach. And you have before you a copy of uh, what I'm going, a statement of what I'm going to say this morning. It is with great concern that I address the Board of Registered Nursing this morning. I have been a practicing registered nurse in a hospital setting, nursing faculty, and now an Associate Dean Director at the Golden West College School of Nursing located in Huntington Beach. In the past 49 years of my nursing practice, mostly in Orange County, I have seen dramatic changes that impact both the quality and the delivery of nursing education. My concern is the ongoing deliberate lack of regard to the need for an affordable and community-driven response for registered nurses in Orange County. The need for people that live, work, and utilize the services in their community. 
It used to be that the only registered nursing programs in Orange County were associate degree programs. Later, it was strategically determined that there was a need to have an opportunity for local associate degree RNs to become bachelor BSNs. Both Long Beach State University, which was already established at this time, and the newly opened Cal State University Fullerton ADN to BSN in 1975 came to be. It was part of their, and I was part of their first graduating class. Since the Board of Registered Nursing's annual school data purported on the state of nursing programs, our Orange County data was a part of a bigger data collection, which included Riverside and San Bernardino counties, making the compilation of data skewed, noting an overall shortage of nurses in the combined area. It is obvious that more remote areas of these additional counties demonstrated a need for registered nursing. This conjoined data encouraged the growth of nursing programs in predominantly Orange County, an area of greater socioeconomic development influence. The two other earliest nursing programs that augmented our graduate ADN to BSN were Vanguard University and Concordia University. They created an amicable partnership to assist our graduates to pursue BSN degrees, known as the ADN to BSN, or the two plus two. Later, the University of California, Irvine School of Nursing assisted in the process as well as West Coast University and others. Now there are more than eight universities that are vying for nursing students in Orange County, not to mention all the usual ADN programs, including Long Beach City College and Cypress College nursing programs from Los Angeles County, coming to five community colleges serving the surrounding area of Orange County. There are more than a dozen nursing programs available in Orange County. This increase in BSN educational opportunities has created a, a competition and a buyer's market to squeeze out the most vulnerable of which are in the lower socioeconomic disparity portion, those who cannot afford a pricey tuition. Community college nursing programs are adversely affected, yet they provide a valuable purpose to serve the community and be economically affordable. Our nursing program expenses are approximately $6,000. This expense does not compare to what a BSN degree would cost, $20,000 for some state colleges to $150,000, depending on what choice the student selects, a state college, university, or proprietary university. Focusing on having more BSN in community colleges is a well-known fact that the Institute of Medicine recommends that RNs be better prepared and encourage hiring and maintaining BSNs in the workforce. Additionally, magnet status for healthcare facilities is most sought after, wanting their RN workforce to deliver excellent patient outcomes, be involved in data collection, decision making and patient care delivery, and nursing leaders to advance the practice of nursing, etc. Our program supports magnet and the institution of medicine intentions. Many of our ADN graduates have practiced and delivered these objectives and local healthcare facilities having their initial education foundation coming from the community college. We encourage all of our students to seek BSNs and not li limit their educational desires. A recent poll of our ADN graduates in 2017-18 demonstrated that over 90% were either enrolled or completing their BSNs within one year after graduating. We encourage and applaud our students for following our educational directive to acquire a BSN degree, but it does not stop there. If the community colleges become a dinosaur of the past and not available for students to use them, the nursing students will be saddled with possible debt, making it much more difficult to advance or even finish advanced degrees. And will this not affect the next generation of nursing educators, nurse practitioners, researchers needing an MSN or greater degree? A new problem then arises. Nurses not wanting to take on more debt with advancing their education. Another major concern is the quality of healthcare facilities available for ADN clinical use, specifically our use for Golden West College of Nursing. Historically, the community colleges used the facilities within their geographic location. Now, this is not true. We are turned down repeatedly from local healthcare facilities with whom we have facility contracts and BRN approvals to make room for the growing and new BSN programs. Just this past year, a local hospital with whom, with whom Golden West College School of Nursing 
used for over 40 years refused to renew our clinical contract, specifically stating that they were taking a new proprietary BSN program and that they were not going to renew future ADN schools contracts. And since ours came out first, we were the first to go. This is a hard hit because our students live in the community and they possess the cultural background to meet the needs of the patients they would be serving. In another case, the community college just miles away from Golden West College was asked by the nursing program director for clinical placement opportunities. The first statement from the CNO was, are you a BSN or an ADN program? Answering the question correctly as an ADN program, the declination by the administrator was direct and forthwith. This was a small community, faci community facility in our local area. This is now the common res response amongst healthcare facilities that we are trying to accrue or maintain clinical sites for our less than 200 students overall that we enroll each semester. Notably, there are hidden incentives coming from proprietary nursing programs using facilities in our community. Foundation donations, educational stipends, sharing faculty connections, etc have been given by the proprietary colleges and universities to the healthcare facilities. We cannot, nor will we compete with this practice. On the side connections are made and hidden between colleges and universities and healthcare facilities. The thought has been raised to let the hospital healthcare facilities choose what nursing programs to support and allow uh, in their facility. How do you think this will go if the above practice continues? Finally, the Golden West College School of Nursing purports a 92.5% NCLEX pass rate. Although not as high as some community colleges, our students come from diverse backgrounds both culturally and socioeconomically. Students see the value in acquiring an ADN degree in a quality and affordable way. Let us not punish our nursing students' sound economical thinking. The nursing students are planning their futures to live in Orange County, California and to practice sound financial ways to live in an ever-increasing lifestyle attributed to a high cost of living in Orange County. Let us not forget about who we serve and the reasons the associate degree nursing program was founded in the first place, to serve the community. Golden West College mission provides an intellectually and culturally stimulating learning environment for its diverse student population. The college provides enriching and innovative programs that helps students transfer to a four-year institution, earn associate degrees, complete certificates in career and technical education, advance their careers in other areas, and demonstrate college readiness. The college is com committed to continuous assessment, improvement of student learning, and institutional effectiveness. Golden West College School of Nursing employs the Board of Nursing to include and secure the value of the associate degree nursing programs and note the importance of maintaining a viable workforce in which the students live, work, and enjoy. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to the Board of Registered Nursing. We need your assistance to address, to address this critical need for associate degree nurses to succeed. Thank you, Board. Thank you very much. Do we have anybody else who would like to make public comment? Excuse me, Diane, can you leave a copy with um, Eloisa, my uh, administrative assistant, in, in the back, please. Make sure she gets a copy. Yeah, thank you. you are welcome to address the item at that time. This public comment is for items not on the agenda. So if that's what you're thinking about, you would come up now. If it's something that you see agendized, you'll have an opportunity later. Okay? Yes. yes hello, my name is Emily yourself. Judge. Yeah. My name is Emily Judge, and I'm Associate Dean of Health Sciences and Nursing Program Director at Glendale Community College. I'm here today to say a few words about our, my thoughts and concerns regarding expansion. The state of California enjoys diversity of cultures and ethnicities that are not found elsewhere in the United States. 
the community college is a microcosm, you could say, of California and its diversity. It provides open access to college education to people from all walks of life and ethnicities and socioeconomic backgrounds. In this public institution, a student can get a quality education that is affordable and would not leave them in an incredible amount of debt after graduation. For many, going to community college is the beginning of a better life. At Glendale Community College, 51% of our students are econo economically disadvantaged and 74% are in financial aid. For many of our nursing students, community college is the most affordable, effective, cost-effective way and sometimes the only way to, get a f to afford a quality college education. Glendale's total cost of tuition, including uniforms, books, and um, NCLEX, pass, uh, rate, uh, NCLEX fees, as well as prerequisite courses, are about $10,000, actually less than $10,000, it's about $8,000, compared to a, a private proprietary profit school of nursing, which is about $145,000 or more. All public community college nursing programs, including Glendale, rely on two important uh, quality indicators, the NCLEX pass rate and the employment rate. And Glendale's community college pass rate, NCLEX pass rate is 95% and 100% employment after graduation. We also have a 45 to 50% of our nursing graduates in an RN to BSN collaborative by the time they graduate. And with 100% of them saying they will, they will get their BSN after they graduate. In order to maintain this effective, effective quality education, we, like many of the community college programs, have curtailed our increase in admission in order to provide high quality clinical rotation sites for all our nursing students. However, if an expensive private proprietary or for-profit nursing college who can buy their way into rotations aggressively expands their student admissions, the results would be catastrophic. Their nursing students could easily flood all the hospitals, healthcare facilities in any given area. The Glendale Community College Nursing Program, with, along with other local community colleges in the area, such as Pasadena and Los Angeles, have been historically, have, has, his, have had historical clinical rotations for years or even decades in Glendale and the Los Angeles hospitals. With this immense influx of students from private institutions, many of us community colleges would have to ha we be asked to leave because we do not have the funds nor the baccalaureate degree to give that most private institutions have. Many of us would have to close our doors and our door or drastically decrease our admission numbers. And this is already happening all over California. For example, six community college nursing programs, including Glendale, have been cut and displaced from a pediatric facility in the Los Angeles area. At first, the facility planned to eliminate all associate degree nursing rotations, but after much negotiation, they decided to cut all the student rotations down to eight and only allow associate degree nursing students who were enrolled in, uh, in an RN to BSN co collaborative to train there. It should be noted that no baccalaureate program going there were in jeopardy of being told to leave. Additionally, students from proprietary nursing programs far outside of Los Angeles, such as Northern California, were welcomed. Only students who personally afford or are willing to take out a hefty loan to pay for a baccalaureate degree were allowed. It should be noted that oftentimes the hospitals that do um, hire associate degree graduates will stipulate in their contracts that they must earn their bachelor's degree within a time period after hire, like for example, two or three years. Since there are far more associate degree nursing programs in the state than baccalaureate nursing programs, especially in the Los Angeles area, the associate degree nursing student is the baccalaureate degree graduate of the future. The community college mission is for open access education to all, and since we accept state funds, we have an obligation to support all students. California community colleges have many low-income students, some who are the first members of their family to attend college and cannot afford to amass a colossal debt for, ed for education. Our goal is to produce the best nurses possible by providing high-quality education and clinical experiences for all nursing students, not just those who can afford it. Our focus should be on the quality of education these nursing students receive rather than their financial status. In summary, we feel that this aggressive expansion should be stopped or limited. We currently use an organized system to reserve our clinical placements with the hospitals 
and many times it is already difficult to maintain hospital rotations. This forceful change that for-profit institutions are trying to implement would only increase the current dilemma we are facing. If expansion of nursing programs is deemed necessary, it should be under the jurisdiction and direction of the California Board of Registered Nursing. Thank you. Thank you very much. I noticed that you appear to be reading off of some notes. Would it be possible for you to leave your um, notes for us so that we have a copy of those? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. And may please leave them with LOE, sir, so we can read it back. And, and, and for the record, so I don't have to keep repeating it, if you have a statement that you'd like to present before the board, please make sure you leave a copy in the, in the back of the room. But you're not required to. Yeah, right. This is, we're just asking if you want to. You're not required to. Please introduce yourself. Thank you. Uh, first of all, happy Valentine's Day. And my name is Mary Wickman. And I'm here on behalf of CACN, uh, the California Association of Colleges of Nursing. And this is Alice Matanagara. I'm here on behalf of ACNL, Association of California Nurse Leaders. And we just have a few uh, points that we wanted to bring forth to the board and our comments are short. Uh, the first is uh, just in response to um, clinical displacement. Um, I did want to make a statement that through the regional summits, uh, we did find uh, that associate degrees have lost clinical placements, certainly, uh, but a lot of times it's not due to the expansion of BSN programs. Actually, 51% of the reduction in clinical placement capacity is a result of staff nurse overload, which is certainly a real problem, or insufficient uh, qualified staff. Um, so the reduction of clinical placements is certainly something that all schools are experiencing, so most certainly the associate programs, as they mentioned, uh, but BSN as well as entry-level masters. <laughs> and the next is uh, clinical agencies, uh, I, you know, the CA CACM believes that they should be able to pick the partners that they want, um, not the California Board of Registered Nursing. And based on the Quad Council me memo that we brought forth to the board uh, several months ago, um, uh, we agree that medical centers should be allowed to make their own decisions about what local school of nursing they want as a clinical partner. And along with that, I think that's important for all of us um, to have to establish partners with the CNOs of the, the medical centers um, to see really what's going on with them and to, so that we can partner more than we have in the past. Um, so the new letter writing uh, that was introduced with the last schools that have come up for expansion, um, CACN would like to have that discontinued as a practice for new schools seeking enrollment growth. Uh, part of it is because of actually those uh, letters that you seek are not factual, it's more subjective data. And I think um, initially the response of another program director might be to state there's no space where who knows if there really is. So what I would like to see happen in CACN would is a more objective approach uh, to looking at really how many students do hospitals have and where are the placements. You know, is there a shortage on nights that could be filled by the school uh, versus day, those kinds of things. Um, some other things too that um, we wanted to support was national and regional accreditation. That was in that letter from the Quad Council. Uh, documented support from clinical agencies and that program growth should be responsible and responsive to current or near future regional RN workforce needs or the ongoing faculty shortage, which is really an, a concern for all of us in academia. Um, lastly, I uh, just wanted to talk more about um, concurrent enrollment. So in the April 2018 Quad Council mem Memo, uh, we s wanted associate degree students who are currently enrolled in a BSN program uh, that they should have clinical placement priority along with BSN students. Uh, California would not have out-of-state interest in California if program directors actively promoted BSN programs to their AD applicants and AD nursing students. Um, so I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello, please come on up and make sure you introduce yourself. Good morning and thank you to the board for your attention to this matter. Actually, I do have a, a letter. 
Thank you very much. I'm Grace Moorfield, and I'm the Associate Dean of uh, Zeus Pacific University School of Nursing Division of Undergraduate um, Programs and the Director of the RN. Um, I hear the concerns of the Associate Degree Program colleagues um, and their students and recognize the importance of, of working together to find equitable solutions to solving the issues at hand, particularly the displacement issues. My alma mater is Pasadena City College. That is where I became a nurse. I have deep respect for the faculty and appreciation for the strong foundation in nursing I received there. It, set, it sets the groundwork or set the groundwork for my entry into nursing practice, as well as my continued growth as I went to a BSN program at Cal State LA and then on to my MSN and PhD. And I'm in great debt to the professors that taught me in those both of those um, schools. Um, we are all here for the same purpose. We have the same goals and we're committed to the continued development of a viable education system that produces a robust workforce, preparing, prepared to meet the healthcare needs of the California population today and tomorrow. To this, I believe we need to expand our view of, nur of what nurses and nursing can become. We need to work together, our state schools with private schools, our ADNs with our BSN programs, et cetera. We need to work together on actualizing a vision for our future, one where we will all have a place at the table. Given the complexities of our healthcare system, the widening variety of settings in which healthcare is taking place, the advancements in technology and the many levels of care needed, access to co a career trajectory that includes a variety of avenues of advancement and opportunities <coughs> is absolutely essential. Um, APU, a member of the Col um, CACN, College of S California Association of Colleges of Nursing, is committed to providing nurse student nurses with opportunities for advancement at all levels. To this end, we've developed our LVN pro to BSN, RN to BSN, and two plus two programs, and are actively exploring opportunities for co-enrollment with students at junior colleges. We welcome any and all ADN colleges to work with us at creating solutions where we can address the needs of students to complete their AA degrees and their BSNs and to also meet that IOM target of 80% BSN in 2020. Regarding the issue of displacement specifically, we too have um, experienced reduction in the number of placements. And we struggle significantly um, as do others with finding, obtaining, and retaining placement opportunities to meet the needs of our students. Um, this indeed is a, can be an exhausting challenge. Um, consistent with the Quad Council's um, memo, we respect the right of clinical agencies to decide who they will partner with. We also recognize both the joy and the burden practicing nurses are experiencing as they engage our students day after day in clinical settings. And we want to be sensitive um, to, to their needs also. We're all in it together. We continue to develop our current clinical practices and explore new ones. We are also actively working on alternative clinical experiences beyond the hospital, increasing the use of these simulation experiences that meet student clinical need objectives and, of course, the BRN requirements, and doing what we can to reduce the burden of clinical placement on facilities and our ADN and BSN colleagues while at the same time maintaining a quality education for all students. You know, I hear this statement over again, uh, particularly by my aging nursing colleagues. Nursing is just what it, it's just not what it used to be. Yes, that is true. However, I challenge the board to be uh, with all of us in making nursing even better. Let's cast a vision for the future with us that expands our horizons. Let's use, let, let us together find creative solutions for clinical displacement and the bigger issues we face in healthcare and stimulate a desire for lifelong learning and growth for every student to the benefit of those we faithfully serve in nursing. Sincerely submitted, Grace Mulligan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, please Hi. introduce yourself. 
Hi, I'm Katherine Hughes. I'm a registered nurse and the executive director of SEIU Nurse Alliance of California. My voice is going to shake because I'm a little emotional after hearing all of this this morning. Um, I have an associate's degree, and I'm not ashamed of it. And I do find when I go to meetings that um, I do get some looks and some, you know, I'm not as probably as respected as I could be. I'm the first college graduate in my family with just an associate's degree. I had three children and a husband at the time. I was working full time. It took me five and a half years to get my associate's degree. My daughter getting her associate's degree has four additional associate's degrees in other things because it took her so long to get through the program. Um, when my coworkers, when I went to nursing school, I had a fourth child, a blessed surprise. I had a full-time job and four kids going through nursing school. I graduated with honors. Not to say that that's better. It's probably not as good as many people in this room or certainly people, nurses in the, in the state, but I'm proud of it. I was, my children are proud of me, watching my daughters grow up and see their mother work hard and raise a family at the same time was important because they're all hard workers and they're all successful women and I'm incredibly proud of them. When I was working full time I got my CCRN after 18 months of working in critical care so I had an additional sort of nationally recognized certification with my license. I was extremely proud of that. I think it made me a better critical care and trauma nurse in the almost 20 years that I was working at the bedside. When my coworkers and I saw that BSN was where everyone was going. They all went back to school together. I'm like, oh, that would be great. They're all, Kathy, you're our union chapter president. You can't go back to school. We need you as our union chapter president. We need you representing. That was my personal choice to be a union rep and be a union nurse, and I'm not ashamed of that either. I'm a proud union nurse. When I listen to the fact that there's nurse burnout, and that's one of the reasons why it's hard to place students, I call bullshit. I'm going to say it out loud like that. I'm an associate's degree, grew up in a trailer park, so I'm not ashamed to say who I am. Nurses are burned out. I hear my members tell me that all the time. I represent 35,000 nurses in the state of California. I am their professional and their policy leader with only an associate's degree, and they elected me to do that job. When they say they're burned out, they're given more and more to do with less and less. We're still fighting to um, enforce our ratios. Nurses are working as um, environmental services. They're working in dietary. They're working as unit clerks. There are charge nurses are often given assignment, patient assignments in addition to being charge nurses. We find this thing all across the state. So when they're telling me they have too much to do and they can't take on a student, it's literally because saying yes or no to a student nurse is literally the only control they have in their workload and in their daily getting through their eight to 12 hour shifts. So that's their only power that they have is to say we can't take, a, I can't take a student. There isn't a single nurse that I've ever spoken to that says they don't want a student because they don't like working with students or because they don't want to encourage the nursing profession and we certainly want people, as I'm not getting any younger, to take care of us in our old age. So I just want to put that out there. there it is a reality that the ADN programs are getting are getting bumped by BSN programs, and it is a ridiculous reality that the private schools are bumping the public school systems. Nobody in this country should come out with a bachelor's degree with $150,000 in debt that will take them forever to pay off. That is ridiculous. These people are working to try to support their families and make their lives better, and they're going to be, they're going to be, because the public schools can't support them, because the state doesn't fund them or the schools don't fund the nursing programs appropriately. It's, it's a shame and I'm ashamed of that part. But I am a proud union nurse and I'm a proud associate's degree nurse and I just want to put that out there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any more public comment? Oh good, I hear somebody else coming up. Good morning. My name is Barbara Huggins, and I am a new interim director at Saddleback College, the nursing program, and also um, uh, assistant dean of, of the health science. And I'm here today, and I thank you very much for this opportunity to speak to you. Um, I want to share a few thoughts 
about how clinical displacement has affected our students and our program. We've had decreasing enrollment in the last three years due to a decline in the clinical placements available to our students. Just three years ago, we had 58 students. Two years ago, 54. Now we're at 50 students per semester that we can admit. I'm These sorry, just point of clarification. Uh, this is directly, which what I'm hearing you say is this is directly related to the clinical placements for your students? Is that this what you're saying? This is related to their stories of, of why they're choosing an associate degree program okay. versus um, a, a BSN as their entry into practice. Thank you. Okay. We do have qualified applicants, over 200 generally in every application pool, and we select 50 of them. And um, th the impact to the students of having the decline uh, or inability to enter the program because of our declining uh, need for enrollment for placement reasons is unfathomable. Um, the stories I have to share with you were given to me by students, and I'm using names with their permission. Um, they have um, to enter into a nursing practice via a BSN program, either a private school or a Cal State, was just not attainable to them at the time. Diana Riggs is a fourth semester student who describes herself as a person who fell through the cracks. She's a graduate of USC, and she had planned to go to medical school, but instead had married and her children superseded this plan. After she was shattered financially in an ugly divorce, she had no work history and was unemployable and found that all her prerequisites needed to be completed again. And to do this at a BSN was out of the question for her at the time. She's um, having the career potential to be an RN is changing her life for her, herself and her family. Lisa Klein is a single mother without child support or extra funds to get through school. She's finishing her fourth semester debt free. She valued attending school and clinical close to her home so she could still attend to the needs of her children. And because of articulation agreements, she co-enrolled at the University of Phoenix and she's going to graduate in June 2020 with her BSN. So the belief that the associate degrees are not promoting BSN or co-enrollment is frankly disingenuous. We do and we are. She valued the community college atmosphere because she found going back to school very intimidating as an adult. When she graduates, her goal is to work at Hogue Hospital. Omar Espinosa has two children. He works full time while he's attending our program. He had to consider the needs of his family <coughs> when selecting a school, and he's grateful to a school that provides high quality education at the community college price. Michael James had his choice. He was admitted to two accelerated BSN programs and Salvat College at the same time. He compared the cost. He, are, he does have a degree in biology, and he decided to attend um, Saddleback, frankly, because of the reputation and the economic savings. There are many other stories of people who um, have their bachelor's and other degrees and had selected a community college because they did not qualify for financial aid. Finally, I'd like to share the story of Christine Nguyen. She's a first semester student at Saddleback College. She has a public health degree from UCI. And after she graduated, she returned to the Bay Area, became an LVN at a private school, and um, had a debt of $30,000. She's been working for the last five years. She was first on our alternate list. And after a single day, a phone call, she moved from the Bay Area to or back to Orange County to be able to be a first semester student in our registered nurse program. She made Saddleback her first choice, and she also did her homework as far as um, schools to choose from, as well as the, the cost of her education. There are many students who want to attend, but they're not accepted because of our enrollment decline imposed by reduced clinical sites. The next four in the alternate list had T scores between 80 to 85% and A's in their prerequisites. Sadly, these are the students who may not have that saddleback story of having a quality nursing education without the burden of the crushing educational debt. 
It's imperative for the strength and the viability of our community college associate degree programs to have some regulation of growth and expansion of nursing programs in Orange County. Thank you so much for hearing me. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Becky Miller. I'm the Associate Dean of Health Sciences and Director of the Nursing Program at Santa Ana College. I thank the BRN for their support in encouraging a collaborative approach to clinical placements to avoid clinical displacement. Let me tell you about my program. Santa Ana College's nursing program received reapproval following a BRN site visit in December 2015, which resulted in no non-compliances and no recommendations. It is a nationally accredited by the Accreditation Commission for Education in Nursing. NCLEX pass rates are over 90%. I surveyed 192 of my nursing students on Monday. 21% are enrolled in a BSN program, with another 19% taking classes this summer, plus another 8% who will enroll while in Santa Ana College's nursing program, and another 41% who will be in baccalaureate programs when they graduate because they don't have the funds now and or the baccalaureate program they are choosing requires their graduation. These students, 74% diverse, with 37% Hispanic, 32% Asian, 3% Black, and 2% other, have financial issues to the point where 80% receive financial aid. These students who, when asked why choose an ADN program at Santa Ana College in particular, overwhelmingly said financial reasons, as well as being in the community where they live and will work, the excellent, the excellent reputation, and the opportunity to realize their dream of becoming a registered nurse for around $6,000 and continue their education for about another fourteen dollars to $15,000 to obtain their BSN. That's about $21,000 to $22,000 to graduate with a baccalaureate degree, not ninety dollars to dollars to $150,000. However, there is 10% of my students who won't go on for their BSN. That's because they'll go on for their master's because they already have a baccalaureate degree. <coughs> and not all the baccalaureate degree students currently in my program want to pursue their, their BSN. Instead the, of their B, I'm sorry, instead of the MSN instead of their BSN, but you see the percentages of the students who are continuing their education with two students, two students who said they don't have immediate plans to go on to their for their education, but all the rest of them do. Over 55 of my students have been affected by clinical displacement in facilities such as Fountain Valley. Kaiser, and Chalk. Why? Because the sheer number of programs asking for placement at the facilities has overwhelmed the facilities. Schools who are, who are enrolling such huge numbers of students, as well as others who increase enrollments in the very impacted Orange County area, has resulted in my program having fewer students and in changing facilities again and again. My, my, my school can't donate to facilities. My program can't offer classes in all parts of the state. My program is in the middle of Orange County, now so surrounded by nursing programs that it's difficult to obtain clinical placements and there's fear of losing more placements. Even losing one placement would be hugely problematic for students to be able to complete my program. Using local specific labor market information to guide increasing enrollments and have that LMI specific to the county would be most helpful. We want to coexist. We want our ADN students to continue their education and create multiple opportunities for students to explore many <coughs> RN to BSN and RN to MSN programs. A concurrent enrollment program will, un will be underway at Riverside City College in fall. The Dean of Nursing, Dr. Sandy Baker, would love to present you with information regarding this opportunity for her ADN students. I have such concern over the recent letter about the BRN withdrawing 
and otherwise not issuing, using, enforcing, or attempting to enforce the curriculum revision guidelines and the cr criteria and guidelines for the self-study. What will be the result to nursing education and nursing <coughs> in the future? Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Hello, my name is Sigrid Sexton. I'm the program director of the associate degree in nursing program at Long Beach City College. And I just want to say that um, Becky Miller has really um, done a good job of um, showing the picture of what our situation is. I have a um, statement prepared, but I think I just would like to say that we, you all know the, um, the, the challenge we associate degree nursing programs are facing and that um, um, at Long Beach City College, we have a similar s situation. I'm faced with the possibility of having to decrease en enrollment starting this coming fall because of clinical displacements. Um, due to private schools and these schools are charging so much more. I'm hearing stories from students of very large debt incurred and sometimes without even a degree to show for it. So I just would like to um, voice my support um, for continued um, collaborative efforts and if it's required for, um, for some kind of control over these um, schools that are so, um, so strong in their increase of numbers. So thank you very much. Uh, just a point of clarification, uh, could you uh, give us an, a number, uh, just if you have it, about the number that you had and the number that you're anticipating of students? You said you were, I think right. I heard a decline yes. in enrollment. Yes, because we um, have a large hospital who is displacing us, and so um, Long Beach Memorial Medical Center. And so because of that, we're going to our surrounding community hospitals, to our surrounding hospitals, and they don't have room because they have these private schools in place. And these private schools offer scholarships. They offer donations to foundations. Um, so we are, um, and I think often the decision makers at the hospital don't realize that what they're doing, the decisions they are making, are will cause the, the fabric of nursing education in this region to change. They see it from that small point of view, but I think that they don't realize that seven hour tuition for hour, our fees are, are seven times less than, it's seven times more to go to some of these large schools. So it's um, you know very distressing. I will, I currently um, admit 40 students a s semester. I typically get 400 students a semester applying. So I, out of that, I accept 40. Um, I'm anticipating possibly going down to 20 because I don't have, I can't anticipate, I've got this, um, I have to find placement for all four semesters. And the pl placements I'm finding are not acute care. They're subacute, they're nursing homes and I can't do a decent education of these nurses. The quality of the education will go down. Long Beach City College started in 1961, one of the first programs in the state and associate degree programs and we hold regional accredit, I mean national accreditation have since 1965 and um, we're an excellent program. We're as, we're as good now, we're better now than we have ever been possibly, but yet it doesn't matter because these um, decision makers, it's just a sad story and I just, I hope that as these decisions are made that we all realize what we're doing. I'm going to retire and whether or not this program s s survives might not matter much to me as an individual but I'm thinking about all these students coming in the future who um, really need this education. It will change the fabric of the socioeconomic advantages that have come from these associate degree pro programs will be lost if these programs are for forced to go down in numbers or potentially even close. Okay. Thank you very much. And if you'd like to take, you said you didn't read your comments, but you had some. If yes. you have something that you'd like the board to see, please um, give it to Eloise we send your way out. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you so much. Hi. I don't have much of a voice, I apologize. Um, my name's Diane Pestalacy. Thank you for allowing us to speak. I'm the Dean of Health Sciences and Human Services and former nursing director from Saddleback College in Mission Viejo, California, which is in Orange County. Saddleback has had an associate degree program since 1971. We've been nationally accredited continuously since 1988. 
like other community college programs, we have excellent NCLEX pass rates. Our current pass rate is 99.12%, which puts us number two in the state um, in all categories, private, public, ADN, and BSN, for programs that graduate more than 100 students taking the boards annually. Two years ago, I stood before the BRN and described a concern about clinical overcrowding. Last year, the Orange County Community College Director shared a collective story about clinical displacement in the primary pediatric facility in Orange County. Fortunately, through collaboration, BRN intervention, and compromise, clinical placements were preserved, and for that, we're very grateful. Today, unfortunately, I'm here to report that Saddleback College has been forced to decrease our nursing program enrollments by 18% due to a decline in clinical placements and limitations put on clinical group size by some of our clinical affiliates. Most of our clinical affiliations have been in place for more than 30 years, and some of them up to 50 years. Although we haven't lost clinical sites outright, I'm very nervous about the next time our clinical affiliation comes up for the um, academic, the um, facility that Diane Rustelli described who denied renewal of their clinical affiliation contract and fear that we, in, if we lose that contract, we would lose OB, PEDS, and medical surgical placements, which would have a further devastating effect on long-term sustainability of our program. Historically, we've admitted 60 students a year. You heard Barbara talk about how we admit 50 twice a year. We haven't offered a transition class in three years, so we have not admitted LVNs who hope to transition to become registered nursing in that time. I'm here today for several reasons. One, to thank the Board of Registered Nursing and the Nursing Education Consultants for their efforts to work collegially with nursing deans, directors, programs, healthcare agencies, and administrators to encourage a collaborative approach to clinical placements to avoid clinical displacement. I'm here to respectfully oppose any pre-licensure nursing program growth in Orange County since it is not supported by local Orange County labor market data. I have that data for you. Um, I'm here to request that Orange County labor market data be evaluated separately and distinctly from the Inland Empire. It will do both regions well. The Inland Empire has some significant labor market needs whereas Orange County has a significant surplus of RNs. Together, the Orange County surplus is not appreciated when evaluated with the Inland Empire in one huge region. In 2017, 363 more nurses were produced in Orange County than there were annual openings. Since 2017, more nursing programs entered pre-licensure education in Orange County and existing programs have grown. I am sure that the, Orange, that the 2018 Orange County labor market information will show a surplus of greater than 500 registered nursing um, graduates in the region. To encourage that labor market, I am here to encourage that labor market data be presented by the county, not region, so it can be used by the BRN or any other regulatory agency direct to direct new and growing pre-licensure programs. Pre-licensure programs seeking growth would be directed to locations where labor market information shows a need. If the labor market shows there is no need, nursing programs would be directed to offer degrees that don't impact clinical placements, such as R&D BSN programs, masters, or doctoral degrees. I'm here to point out that community college registered nursing programs, by virtue of the mission of the community college, have limited opportunities. The service area of a community college is fixed and well prescribed to avoid destructive competition. The only degree that can be offered is an associate degree. We don't have the options that are available to our other nursing programs. Other contributions that are made by the community colleges to the workforce are made by community colleges by offering specialty training for incumbent registered nursing wishing to be employed in new areas like the operating room, the emergency department, and critical care. Community colleges typically have multiple transfer and articulation agreements to encourage graduates to continue their nursing education economically. Saddleback has 12. At Saddleback, 40% of our students are enrolled in baccalaureate programs upon graduation, and 85% are enrolled in bachelor's programs within a year. 83% are employed within a year of graduation. 
I am here to emphasize that despite national accreditation and high NCLEX pass rates, clinical displacement threatens long-term survival for community college associate degree nursing programs. Associate degree nursing is essential to provide an avenue to enter the profession and to provide social mobility for students in the community who are underserved, culturally diverse, and who don't qualify for financial aid or can't take on the financial burden to attend a baccalaureate nursing degree program. The two-year associate degree program, as many have mentioned, costs about $6,000. It doesn't compare to what even a public uh, bachelor's program costs, but especially doesn't compare to the private school fees. I've included a table in the handout, I have one for each of you, that describes the collective diversity in Orange County. We are diverse. We have 27% Pacific Islander, Asian, 28% Hispanic, and 32% white Caucasian, with more than 64% of the students coming from the non-traditional student classification being over 25 years old. I'm here to express serious concern over the recent letter sent to deans and directors from the BRN and Dr. Morris that states that the Board of Registered Nursing certified to the California Office of Administrative Law that it would withdraw and otherwise not issue, use, enforce, or attempt to enforce the use of the curriculum revision guidelines and the criteria and guidelines for self-study. Programs are, so programs are to rely on the Nurse Practice Act and it's implementing regulations alone without the supporting indicators or evidence. Really, that's frightening and sad to me at the same time. And it brings up more questions than answers. How can a regulatory body evaluate quality without indicators and evidence? It's well known that California BRN approval, reapproval process is rigorous and demanding possibly one of the most rigorous and demanding in the country. I believe the rigor holds nursing education programs to a higher standard. The potential implication for nursing education without those evidence and indicators could be devastating. How will the BRN be able to carry out its mission to protect the public while enforcing the Nurse Practice Act and laws related to nursing education without data and evidence? What, it, what, what is to prevent the possibility of fly-by-night nursing programs, businessmen, and their attorneys from coming to California, setting up, pro, uh, setting up shop as a nursing program to make money off unsuspecting, vulnerable, future nursing students. I hope to never to see the day when nursing education became nothing more than a business venture and where making a profit mattered more and was prioritized over patient care and safety. Sadly, that day may have come. I hope I've misread or possibly misunderstood the letter. If there is legislation that limits the authority of the BRN to carry out its mission, we need to stand up and we need to act now to support the BRN, to do whatever it takes to empower the BRN to retain their authority to regulate nursing education and practice in the name of quality patient care and safety. Thank you, and please introduce yourself. Good morning, my name is Lynn Yamakawa, and I'm the director of the Associate Degree Nursing Program at Los Angeles Harbor College. And I'd first like to start out by saying that I echo agreement with everyone who has preceded me, so I think I'm just gonna limit my, my uh, discussion with you uh, to give you a snapshot of clinical placement in our nursing program. Los Angeles Harbor College has been in existence for 50 years, and over those 50 years, we've had strong community support in terms of clinical agent partnerships. <clears throat> Most, the overwhelming majority of our graduates remain in the community and seek employment in those clinical partnerships, and so we create a very diverse nursing workforce in our community. However, over the past three or four years, we have been denied clinical rotations in at least three agencies. And the reason that they give us is mostly because they either have or are pursuing magnet status, in which they prefer bachelor's degree nursing students. And they um, have even told us that they will not interview our nursing students for employment. This makes clinical placements for our students very difficult. 
Though we have never not placed a student in a clinical rotation, the situation, I believe, is very tenuous and I get very stressed out when I'm trying to make clinical placement decisions. We would respectfully like to ask the board to carefully consider the impact that the expansion of nursing programs, especially private and bachelor's programs, the impact that it would have on associate degree nursing programs that have had long-standing relationships in the community and in terms of the potential for de being denied clinical placement again and due to capacity of our clinical agencies. We are already vying for valuable clinical space for our students and if we add more students, um, we're fearful that all of our place clinical placements would be in jeopardy for our nursing students. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello. Um, uh, thanks for listening to me today. Uh, my name is William Anderson, and um, uh, I'm one of the students that got displaced by the Brightwood uh, closure. And so um, I just kind of want to give my background too. I, I don't want to get into a debate with everybody uh, between universities and community colleges and private schools. Um, I went to two community colleges uh, the first time around when I went to school, and, uh, and University of Alabama as well. And then um, I worked for the government for about six years, and I got into medical transportation, and that's what made me want to become a nurse. So I went back to school, and when I was going to school, you know, I looked at all the different options that are out there. And so um, in light of some of the conversation that's been said today about private colleges, I just kind of want to set the record straight and from a student's perspective and tell you how I feel. So um, as far as the cost of private versus not non-private being so much higher, I just don't think that's true. Um, I think when you look at the tuition that I paid, the tuition that we were charged was 57000 And out of that 57000 the Pell Grants account for about 20, 22, 20000 of that. We have a Cal Grant that covers 4.5, 4 or some people get 5.5. We also have a scholarship from the school if you're employed. And when you go through all the, the different um, systems that are set in place to help uh, students go to school, it actually only is going to cost me about $22,000. And when you, when you look... In pers with perspective to what we're talking about, when I went, when I tried to go to, uh, I wanted to go to a community college. That's the first place I went to, but um, and maybe it's due to the lack of clinical sites. I don't know, and that's something that we should look at and fix it. And I, I want every, I want every student has a different situation. For some students, they're going to do better in a community college. For some, it'll be a university, and for some, like myself, um, when I left work, I didn't have a place to stay. I couldn't afford rent and try to go to school. So for me to go to a, a community college, um, it was going to take about a year to a year and a half to get the prereqs done because my old, old prereqs wouldn't count. Then I would have to apply and waste, waste another semester, and then I'd potentially get in. And those prereqs, I couldn't just do the prereqs and then transfer to a different community college. They only apply to that community college. So because of the barrier for me to get into school, going to that type of situation would mean that I would have to account for rent for three and a half years versus 20 months with a private school and having most of the help. So to me, it didn't really make any sense to go to a community college or a university. It made way more sense to go to a private school. And then in the private school, it's not all about money. We were consistently told every single day that the main thing that we need to be looking out for is our patients. And we need to think of them as one of our family members. So there is a lot of... Um, ethics and a lot of responsibility with the teachers and the staff that work at private schools and it's not as expensive as everybody thinks and so um, maybe the solution is to make us I don't know I'm new to this whole system I've only been to these meetings a couple of times there's got to be a way to pick up um, placement opportunities for community colleges as well as private and all of the different students in my school some of us need to go to Glendale Career College and we really appreciate them stepping in to help us out because no one else would help us. Um, so also CNIs, well I don't think they're here today, but both of those schools have been really um, helpful for us. And so today they're gonna be on the agenda. I really hope that they that they get through. But um, besides, besides all of that, um, the only other thing I really wanted to say was that um, as far as the community colleges go, I really have a lot of respect for them too. And I hope that, because you know there's a lot of jobs out there for nurses right now, the more uh, opportunities we have for everybody to earn their licenses, the better. I know tons of friends of mine that want to be nurses and they just can't get in because it's so difficult. So hopefully we can find a solution that's good for everybody. But I really wish everybody would stop picking so much on the private schools because I think they have a really good, they solve a, a really needed problem too. That's all I want to say. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi. <laughs> good morning. Um, 
uh, Judy Corliss, a previous uh, board member here from the BRN. And um, when I served on the board, I was on the Education Committee. And in 2012, we were just about to take a look at the information that was being um, disseminated across the nation with the National Council State Boards of Nursing in simulation. Um, our board was ended before that report came out. Then subsequent to that, the report came out that states across the nation were having clinical placement issues um, far greater than ours because they had smaller numbers, less hospitals, and less places for students to do their um, rotations. So they did a study on simulation as to how that would affect uh, in the percentage across the nation uh, to allow students uh, to do more than 25% simulation, up to 50% in the nation. So in that report, it stated that there was only one difference in the schools that used the 50%, and that was a little bit higher attrition. But other than that, there was no difference in their end result of their NCLEX pass rates or their ability to learn critical care nursing, pediatrics, and OB, which is where the largest number of issues are, as you know, in Orange County. Chalk is one of the three places you can do pediatrics, so Chalk is overrun and, of course, wants BSN students because they're not going to hire any students other than BSN. So if this board, and I know my board was about to um, embark on looking at National Council's report and try to come up with something between 25% and 50 to be the standard for simulation. And when I went to the meetings that you had, the regional meetings that Joe um, Morris um, was the efficient at, that was one of the subjects we talked about at every table. Increasing simulation to be able to allow the critical care things to be taught uh, in the schools that had simulation. And for those that did not have high quality, um, high fidelity simulation, they would be able to utilize possibly one of the other schools or my solution was a mobile simulation lab, which I know that Glendale Career College has implemented. I'm not sure if they've actually rolled the bus out yet, but uh, that was a thought that I had, and I worked with them on that, and I'm also creating another one now for two other schools, and that way we could have other people use high-fidelity simulation if they weren't able to afford it for their students. So I would ask that the board try to look at that National Council's report and see if we can't use that as a partial solution to some of this clinical uh, placement issues. Not displacement, but clinical placement so that they can have their critical care. No new student first day out is gonna go to work in a labor and delivery unit, uh, ICU, or an ER without further training anyway. So getting them the basics, in my opinion, would be, and not just mine, everybody across the nation that was in that study, be uh, very, um, advantageous to help diffuse some of these issues and I really thank you so much for um, the time that uh, you've afforded me to talk thank you thank you very much good morning good morning good morning esteemed colleagues and board members my name is Eleanor Papa and I am a nursing faculty member at Santa Ana College it is reported that a nursing shortage will be most felt in the San Francisco Central Valley and Central Coast regions with surpluses in the LA region if that's the case, then increased program enrollments should be limited to the programs who operate in the immediate areas where shortages exist. We are doing a disservice to students currently enrolled in nursing programs by struggling to find them clinical placements. I believe that the board's time is better spent on finding ways to strengthening the relationship between pre-licensure programs and clinical partners rather than increasing enrollment in areas where surpluses are predicted. The majority of the programs requesting enrollment increases are private institutions. As someone who went to a private university for a nursing degree, I can tell you that I will spend my entire life paying the student loans I acquired from getting my education. Because of these loans, I've put off my dreams of owning a home and having children because I'm not sure that I can financially afford to. These ADN programs are sometimes the only way students can afford to pursue their dreams of becoming a nurse. Many of my students are working adults who have families to support and are penny pinching just to make it through school. By becoming a nurse, they will be better able to provide for their families. If I could go back, I would have done things differently. I would have gone to an ADN program, and then maybe I wouldn't have to be losing $1,200 a month to pay back my loans. I recently read a blog post about the board's decision to cap enrollment at a private university that described ADN programs as beleaguered. I resent comments that ADN programs are beleaguered. 
I know at my work, we are continually encouraging students to pursue, pursue their BSN degrees. We regularly have BSN programs come to our school and speak with our students. As a first semester instructor, I can tell you that I'm regularly encouraging my students to further their education. I believe instead of fighting each other, we should work together to strengthen relationships to ensure a smooth transition for our ADN students to BSN programs. Therefore, I'd like to say that yes, it does take a village, but more importantly, it takes a village working together. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning, my name is Catherine Page and I am the Dean and Director of the ADN program at Rio Hondo College. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. Um, like my colleagues before me, I have in our program um, had to reduce the number of students that we admit to our program because of clinical displacement. Uh, this year we are decreasing our enrollment potentially by 20%, we have already decreased by 10%. Uh, the Board of Registered Nursing has already done its homework, at least I feel so. You do a survey every year of all the programs in the state of California. At the BRN Regional Summits in 2018, Dr. Morris presented that in the greater Los Angeles area and Orange County area, there were already more graduates of nursing programs than there were entry level positions. By contrast, there were areas in the Inland Empire, San Joaquin Valley, and in Northern California that did not have enough <coughs> graduates to meet the entry level, nursing, uh, entry level nursing job needs. While in the state of California, there is a need of increasing nursing graduates, where those programs or the programs that grow needs to be regulated by the BRN as is your mandate. It does not matter where the clinical displacements occur. It does not matter if it's an ADN program, a BSN program, a public program, or a private program. Clinical displacements are going to occur when there is growth. You are hearing stories of displacements in pediatrics, psychiatric, and medical surgical rotations. We are all nursing programs. We are all feeling the pinch of clinical displacement. We ask that the BRN actively engage in determining growth and expansion where appropriate. Use the data that you have collected to help you determine where that growth should and should not occur. You have an opportunity to support all the current programs with determining that growth and with increasing opportunities for other clinical experiences such as simulation. As my colleague explained that the national survey indicated up to 50% works very well to prepare nursing graduates. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Letitia Clark. I serve as the District Director of Public Affairs and Government Relations for the South Orange County Community College District. And I'm here this morning in support of my colleagues at Saddleback College, but also as a member of the Orange County Legislative Task Force. Uh, each chancellor from each community college district in Orange County and Government Relations Director serve on that committee. And we, as a task force, meet monthly. Um, we talk about legislation that is impacting our colleges and for a year now we've been focused on this issue because of the growing concern from all of the community colleges in Orange County. I wanted today to just inform you of some of our efforts to educate our local elected officials and st state legislators about this growing concern to see if there's maybe um, a contingent legislative fix that could support what the BRN is doing as well. But we're prepared to educate all of our legislative officials to let them know of this growing concern and use our skills as marketing directors, as PIOs to tell the story of the students and what our nursing programs are facing at this point. I know that as, as a board, you couldn't 
um, reply to a lot of the comments today because this issue is not on the agenda, but I would just make the formal ask that you direct staff to get back in touch with everyone that made comments today or to put this on an agenda in the future so that we can come back and talk about a solution. But I know that your hands are tied this morning because it's not on the agenda, but I'd like to make the official request to direct this to staff for further discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Garrett Chan. Um, I am the president and CEO of Health Impact. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this is my fourth week in the job. Um, so <laughs> if I don't have all the answers, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, if I don't have all the answers, I will get back to you um, after I research them. Um, just for everybody's um, kind of awareness about Health Impact, we are the California State Workforce um, Center for Nursing. And we co-led the regional um, nursing summits with the BRN um, to look at this um, issue around clinical displacements. Um, just a little bit about my background in terms of how I got into nursing. Um, I went to Diablo Valley College, which is a community college um, for my prerequisites, and I really enjoyed my time there. I got a great education. Transferred to San Jose State to do my bachelor's um, of science in nursing. Um, did my master's and PhD at UCSF. Um, one of the things that I want to comment on specifically is that today we've heard compelling stories and data um, that we should take in consideration as we're addressing the issue um, of clinical displacements. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, I apologize. Um, Health Impact is uh, committed to taking the next steps. We started with the regional summits to, as a way to illustrate the issues, um, get people's feedback, um, ideas about what the next steps are going to be. Um, in the regional nursing summit report that was um, uh, published um, in early February, um, we do have distinct recommendations um, that were identified by the participants at the regional summits. So. Um, we would like to partner with traditional acute care clinical partners, the non-traditional clinical partners that are yet to be explored, um, educators at all levels in public and private settings, the BRN, policy partners, professional nursing um, organizations, labor groups, and the public. Um, I intend to place this on a future agenda um, as, a, as a future agenda item for us to have more discussions. I feel like the BRN plays an integral part in the, um, in the uh, creation of solutions, but I think also that there are other players um, in California that need to be brought to the table um, so that we can address this issue because solely relying on regulatory or legislative um, solutions um, perhaps may be challenging. So um, I'm looking forward to working with everybody. Um, I will give a copy of this to Eloisa. Um, and I think that as we move forward, taking um, an appreciative inquiry stance, saying that we understand what each other is feeling and how we can support each other in this very difficult time is um, of utmost importance. And the respect that we have for each other is um, going to be important as we try to solve the solution, uh, work towards the solutions. One thing that I noticed is that um, absent in the conversation as of um, today um, is that we don't have any clinical partners coming to the table and talking about what is the issue. Uh, my previous role uh, in January was at Stanford um, Healthcare as the director of the Center for Education and Professional Development, and I was responsible for clinical placements from the clinical practice side. And um, to other speakers' um, uh, credit who have been on the academic side, you've accurately, or they have accurately, identified the many challenges that we have in trying to place um, students in our clinical sites. And so I would love to see more clinical partners coming in, to the discussion because at the end of the day, they're the only ones who are going to be able to solve this problem. By opening up clinical sites and clinical placements, 
um, having educational organizations try to negotiate and um, and try to find clinical placements without having the clinical partners at the table is going to have limited effect. So thank you very much for this time, and I look forward to seeing you in a future BRN meeting. Thank you. B.J. Bartleson from the California Hospital Association. I am representing the clinical partners in acute care. And I say and underline acute care because I need to encourage folks to think that the clinical partners are larger than the hospitals. Um, it's very important that we all, as emotional and as compelling as all of our concerns are, think about how nurses are responding to the transformation of health care. Health care. We're moving away from medical care to health care, so we have to think differently. I want to uh, um, uh, ask, I want to go over again the work that has been done with the board, with Health Impact, with all the partners, academic partners from ADN programs, from BSN programs, from master's programs, um, various clinical partners from acute care to prisons to home health, labor. We have all been meeting to try to solve this problem with data and objective work, and I can encourage everyone to participate in that. And even though the clinical partners can't be here as much as maybe the academic partners, I think we're figuring out a way to make that happen. So on behalf of the clinical partners and hospitals, we are here with you, even if it's just me. Um, we are encouraging more, the ACNL health policy folks, uh, they are very, very uh, interested in being here more and uh, talking more about clinical issues, but I say we have to broaden the clinical perspective for all of us. Um, so let's keep the work going. As uh, Garrett had said, the regional summit uh, uh, opportunities for change have been identified. We found out some very interesting things about ourselves, about schools, about differences in unit requirements. Think about our nursing practice acts. Are there issues that need to be changed in our nursing practice acts to affect the future? Um, so all of us need to kind of put our heads together and create that future. So from the clinical partners, we are here, we are listening, we are willing to work 110% with you. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Marqueta Huscava. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is this is the spot. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and I'm the executive There's some water there if you need. Thank you. And I'm the executive director of the American Nurses Association in California. Um, I will not be taking much of your time by, I would like just to echo uh, Dr. Chan from uh, Health Impact and BJ Battleson from California Hospital Association. Uh, the findings that uh, the BRMs, the regional summits, which were absolutely amazing and successful and productive. Uh, the findings and the solutions, the recommendations that the Health Impact uh, uh, published. And uh, we stand ready to work with our coalition partners, uh, with our board council partners. Our membership is half and half. We have BSN, MSN, we have ADN nurses. I am foreign graduate nurse, so I don't even know where I belong. But uh, we are here to work with you and to uh, make sure that we uh, follow IOM recommendations. Uh, that uh, uh, we allow for academic progressions, and then in the in the process, we are not making our nurses broke. So thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any more public? Ah, I see somebody coming up. Good morning. Madam Chair. Yes. Can you have everybody that's going to make a public comment come up to the front right now so we can? That's a good idea. Okay. So if anybody else is going to make public comment. Could you come forward now so we know how many more people there are? Thank you very much, and good morning. Good morning. I'm Christiana Baskaran, the Director of Nursing at LA City College. Um, I'm just going to present, uh, you know, the population we serve and how diverse uh, population uh, we are helping. The students from various economic backgrounds, uh, we are serving those students. Almost 75% of our students are economically disadvantaged, and almost 75% are, uh, you know, uh, they are depending on the financial aid. And uh, these students wouldn't have got a chance if uh, had it not been, uh, you know, the community college setup. So, and also uh, based on October 15, 2018 census data, 
um, our student population comprised of 28% Latino, 25% Asian, and 24% White Caucasian, and 8% Filipino, and 7% African American, and 5% missed our other races. So you can see how diverse population we are serving. And the other one is our uh, NCLEX pass rate is within the range of 86 to 94 percentage, and uh, almost 94 percentage of our students employed within one year of graduation, and uh, al almost our recent graduate surveys showed that 50 per 51 percentage of our students have already got their BSN. So, and also we are also part of the collaborative programs. So we face challenge, uh, you know, in the LA area, clinical displacement in, in terms of pediatric and other areas. So I really request the board to consider before increasing the enrollment, consider all the factors which is affecting the existing schools and how it affects our uh, student placement in our different clinical facilities. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, I didn't see anybody else coming forward, so I'm assuming that we're finished with public comment, is that correct? Okay, see nobody else coming forward. I'm going to do item 3.0, which is to review minutes from previous meetings. At the end of item 3.0, we're going to take a break. So in a couple of minutes, we'll be taking a break. So item 3.0, I'm going to- I make a motion that we approve the minutes from item 3.0. All right. Uh, do I have a second? Do I have a second? Yes. I'll second. second. Okay, we have a second. So starting with Mr. Jackson, let's vote. I mean, sorry, is there any public comment? Any board comment? Then we'll proceed to the vote. Michael Jackson, yes. Elizabeth Woods, yes. Trandy Phillips, abstain. Donna Gerber, yes. Laura Delacruz, Ray Sibeline, yes. Melda Seha Butkowitz, yes. Okay, we'll be taking a, so that passes, and now we'll be taking a 10 minute break. And if you would let the board members go first, if you see them in the restrooms before you go, we'd appreciate it so we can get back and keep moving. Thank you very much, bye-bye. <laughs>